Hello, my name is Ilona and in this video of my series Shadow Work, I want to take a look at what's going to happen to people that do not wake up. Ultimately, it is a decision unconsciously or consciously that people make not to wake up. So what's going to happen to these people? Uh, I've mentioned in my Dutch video, we have young souls. So it's very possible that someone is a young soul. It means that this is really the beginning of their growth. So this is the first time they really start to live in a way or they started on their journey. So when they come on earth, they kind of follow the system perfectly because they really still have to experience everything and they don't really have an uh, inner knowledge. And then there are other young souls who've becoming him. And I call them young souls because it's the first time that a, they've arrived on earth. So that's why I call them young souls in that this is the first time they experience earth that actually are from higher dimensions. So they are not like young souls in a way that they've already have a lot of experience and wisdom from other dimensions. And they actually come here to help us, to support us. They've made that choice. Their soul has made that choice and they are here. A lot of children are here, just don't fit in the system because they feel so strongly there's something wrong with the systems and they get all these, these, these labels and, and the system doesn't know how to work with them because really they don't fit in the system. And that's exactly the point why they're here. They're here to change the system, to support this great awakening. And so they don't fit in anywhere. So you can call them young souls based on the fact that this is the first time they're on earth. But if you look at their consciousness, they are not young souls. They have, they have a, they're like star seeds from other dimensions. They have a big understanding of what is going on, what's truly going on. So they just don't fit in. So you have the difference there. And of course, you also have people with uh, who are have been, uh, how do you say this, coming to earth for a while now, they have more uh, past lifetimes, but they still decide not to wake up. I've mentioned this in another video. A lot of people um, who are, have been grown up in a very dysfunctional family do have a tendency of looking at their parents because they were dependent on their parents as, no, my parents have been lovely. They have been wonderful. They don't want to see and look at the pain from that period. So they have this image of their parents are perfect the way they were. They had a perfect life. Although if you look at their life right now, it's a mess, for instance, or maybe they're holding on firmly to all kinds of things because of things that happened in their youth, but they don't want to look at that. And the deep state has of course used this, it's called transference. They've used this to make the government look like their father and mother. So they have a similar, uh, how to say this, energy. Even in the Netherlands uh, for a long time, it's called father to staat, which means like something like father state, who's taking care of you, who will, uh, is loving and gentle and has the, the best intentions for you. So there are a lot of people that do not want to hear anything about the government being wrong because that ultimately will mean that they have to look at their own parents. So they, they, would, they don't want to hear anything about that because it will point them to the pain from their own childhood. So people have to understand, and of course, not only those people, but you have also other people who do understand something's wrong, something's off, but they do not want to look at their pain. They don't want to deal with their sadness, their fear, their uh, what's going on inside. Uh, some of them people don't even want to look at themselves. They've completely, how to say that, focused on the outside. So everything is is uh, everything wrong in their life is because of everything that's happening because of people in their lives, because of situation. It's never about them. So there's a a group of people that do not want to take responsibility in any way for themselves. And of course, our society is uh, leaning into that. We have a society of uh, comfort, of making it easy, not making a real meal for yourself. Just, just call and, and get something delivered or just get a package and just throw that in a microwave. Everything is... You know, if you have pain or something, oh, we have a pill for that. Oh, we have this for that. Don't look inside yourself. Don't take responsibility here. We, we'll settle it for you. We'll take care of you. So there are a large group of people 
that want to be taken care of, that do not want to step into her, their own authority. And of course, the group of people, and I have to say, we have to wait, of course, for the event to happen, the scary event, because it can still shock people and wake them up. And when I'm talking about wake them up, I mean that they will look at things differently, that they are more open to what's going on. Something's very wrong here. I'm really talking about waking up. You know, you have all kinds of stages in waking up, but that at least they're open to listening to something new and ultimately look at themselves as well. And why didn't I uh, see this? We'll get to that point. So it's possible that there are people now not listening to you, maybe loved ones, people you care about, just not waking up, that will be woken up by the scary event. That's why the scary event has to happen because it's like shock. It's like shaking people up, like they have to look at something. But there's going to be a group of people that will not wake up. They refuse to wake up, they refuse to see it, probably even if it's in their face, they will just deny it, they will look away, and that ultimately is a choice. Now, I believe that your, uh, your energy will decide where you'll go, where the fre your frequency will decide in what dimension you will live. So the people that are open, and I'm also talking about people uh, you do not have to heal everything to uh, go into the higher dimension. If you are aware, that is the main point. If you are aware, people can work with you and help you with that. But you have to take responsibility of yourself. If you are aware of yourself, if you know that the responsibility is within yourself, you can uh, move on to a higher dimension and you will get help obviously to work on everything, but you will have to do ultimately heal yourself, but you are at least prepared to heal yourself. So don't be afraid that you have to have heal everything before things are happening. I've, I've got that question, like I have so much healing to do from what has happened to me? Uh, am I going to be left behind? You're not going to be left behind if you are willing to look at yourself, if there is consciousness, because that's the most important part about spiritual growth is that you look at yourself, that you can really truly accept responsibility for yourself and understand, all right, I've created this. What can I learn from this? What's going on in my energy? That is really the most important part. If you're open to that, I truly believe you can move to a higher dimension. But we are really now in a period of time to heal ourselves. That's why all things are coming up. And probably you can even see it in certain people that are not aware, uh, that are uh, do not want to take a look at themselves, that they really get more and more negative. They really are how do you say this, kind of digging a hole for themselves that they won't be getting out of. And because of the higher energy, we are going to see more and more things. The manifestation I've noticed is, is almost faster. So if there are things that you're not dealing with, you're going to see that more and more in your uh, reality and at a faster speed, so to speak. So I've noticed if I wanted to uh, manifest something, I can see that it's just moving faster now. That's because the energy is higher, especially in low energy. It takes a long time before it manifests, but now it's going to manifest faster and faster. So especially if you carry a lot with you, you're going to manifest that with you. That's why shadow work is so important. That's why it's so important to heal yourself, to look at what you still carry with you, your fears, uh, anger, shame, all kinds of things that you can still carry with you. I've mentioned it yesterday in a video that I felt a lot of fear coming up, especially with this scary event. I wasn't like, I have this trust. I know it's going to be all right. I have this, like this basis. I know everything is going to be all right. But these were old fears from past lifetimes, most likely connected to Atlantis or maybe other situation in past lifetimes or maybe even uh, future lifetimes because ultimately time doesn't exist. Something came up, something was triggered in me. So it's something I had to take a look at and I'm going to mention how I deal with that at the end of the video. How do I feel through fear, anger? 
how do I deal with that? So I'm going to mention that as an exercise and it's actually very simple, but it's, it's not easy, <laughs> so to say. So things come up and I also want to uh, mention somebody was reacting. It's also possible that you feel the fear around you, especially when you're very sensitive, you feel the collective fear because a lot of people are scared now. And because they're not dealing with their fears, they are projecting it outside. They're creating, of course, more fearful situations because the fear is inside of them. But it's possible that you live with a lot of people around you that are very fearful and you actually feel that fear. But the fear can only trigger you if you still have a hook in you that, they, that it can leech onto. So you have to understand, if you are, you know, you've really uh, been through all this fear about what's happening around you and you really heal that in yourself, even when everyone is fearful around you and this entire fearful collective field is around you, it won't trigger you. You can just look at it in a neutral way. That's why it's so important to uh, heal yourself inside because then you won't be triggered that much and you won't be triggered at all ultimately. And uh, I've noticed myself, the more I feel through things, the better my connection is, is with my intuition, with God, with the source. And I will feel what is right for me without feeling guilty or fearful or frustrated. I know which steps I should take for myself. So that's, I want to emphasize. And the, um, so if you do feel a lot of fear around you, look inside yourself. What is triggering inside you? Maybe there's old pain, old things that can heal, but heal them because then you will not get triggered. If you have a lot of negative people around you, it won't bother you if there's nothing inside you that you still carry with you. That's why it's so important to heal yourself. This is the most important work we have to do, shadow work. If we heal ourselves, not just our shadow, it's also very interesting, but also the fact that we can live with our light, with our power, with our strength and take our responsibility and of course step into our own power and start manifesting what we want. We will really be so powerful. Nothing can enter that. We are perfectly safe. We can perfectly fit in our life, you know, how do you say that? Manifest what we want in our life. And that's so important. But if I feel things or get triggered by something, uh, personally, I would lie down on my bed. I like that because I don't know, it just makes me feel more uh, relaxed. If you feel better with sitting in a chair, that's fine too. I completely disconnect myself of anything. So I'm really just by myself on my bed. And then I visualize what's triggering, what happened. And in this case, the fear came up and I start feeling, where do I feel this? So where in my body? So it could be in my solar plexus or more in my, uh, you know, in my stomach. I might feel a knot, something like that. I go there and I start breathing there and just feeling, just feeling. I don't, I do not analyze. I don't sink in with the feeling. So if there's a lot of fear that I completely sink in and start panicking and, and, and get mentally about that as well, because then you can really, if you get very scared, you can uh, start panicking and get all these thoughts. Oh, this could happen. This could happen. So try to avoid that. And you can do that by just breathing in that area that you feel and just feel it. Do not analyze it. Do not sink into it. Do not wallow in it. Feel it very important. You can just breathe through it and it can get very uncomfortable, very uncomfortable, especially shame. I've had that a couple of weeks ago. I still, there's still some shame in my system. I need to face not looking forward to it, but I know I'll have to face it. It's very uncomfortable. It's a very uncomfortable feeling, but if you keep breathing through it, you are kind of just dissolving it and it can take time and it's possible that it won't happen in one time and you will have to go back a few more times, especially when it's a very deep fear, very deep shame or guilt. It's very important. Just take the time and breathe through it. And then at a certain point you become like neutral. It doesn't hurt you anymore. You can even use triggers in your life right now. 
someone said something to you, something triggered, go where you feel it. Maybe you feel it in here, in your heart. Maybe you feel it stress or, or pain somewhere in your body. Breathe through it and feel it. Feel what, what's, what's going on there in that area. What do you feel? Very important. So just feel through it. Do not analyze it. Do not get into your head because then you're just stepping above your emotions and then don't wallow into it because then you're you're taken by the emotions you're not feeling through it so that's very important and really you will start to feel by dissolving that part but that painful part you are taking back that energy it is part of you you carry it with you whether you want to or not whether you push it away or you do not want to look at it it's part of your energy so you keep manifesting that resonates with that part so if you truly heal that and just dissolve that and transform that not only will you be able to start manifesting way more powerful but those situations those people will fall away they they there's nothing to uh, that resonates with you anymore so they will not come into your life anymore and things will be resolved and you'll be uh, how to say better like i've mentioned before I can make better decisions what's right for me without being clouded by guilt or by fear or by anger. I can really make decisions that suit me, that fits with my intuition, like I said, fits with my connection with God and you'll be able to do that as well. Of course, see if this resonates with you to begin with, obviously, but if it does, it's very important to look at your shadows, see what's still in there and work through it the stronger you'll get and the stronger we'll get the easier and the faster we'll be able to start manifesting this beautiful new world i also believe because it may be a concern that if there are people in your life you care about that will not wake up and will ultimately go to a different dimension if everything that happened happens you know if everything that's going on if it happens and we go through uh this this period toward this new energy we're already starting to feel this new energy it's already there but then we really start to live in that new dimension in that new world then obviously those people will separate but do not be afraid of that because the stronger we'll get we are multi-dimensional so the stronger you'll get you'll be able to travel to other dimensions as well if you want to so you're never going to lose anyone you can still meet them or contact them if you want to just like people that have passed over i do believe that uh, the more we are living in that new energy the more contact there will be from people that have already passed over so you're never going to lose someone. You do not have to be afraid just because someone's not waking up that they're lost forever. They're not. Like you, they are spiritual beings. So they're, how do you say that? There's always going to be a connection. It will be a different road for them, but you can always meet them along the way. So I'd like to leave it at this. Hope to see you in another video. Bye.